Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. From here in the sanctuary at the Sweetwater Church of Christ in Jacksonville, Florida, I minister Trevante Peterson. Greet you all with the love of God, and I pray that you all are doing well. Thank you all for tuning in on this afternoon. This is the second part. Um, of this cyber revival that has been put together by um, the great minister, Brother Jeremy Flowers, and I thank him for considering me um, to be a part of this cyber revival, and I pray um, this year it's going to be like Sunday morning. I, I feel like Sunday morning up in here right now. It ain't many of us in here right now. I praise God for our minister of music, Brother Coffee, and our, our media minister. Thank God for checking. He got everything going, and we thank God uh, for them. But, y'all, we're just going to go on like it's Sunday morning. Is that all right? If you have your copy of the Word of God, I pray wherever this finds you. And while you're watching this right now, go ahead and um, hit share on the video. Ain't going to take you but one second. And go ahead and hit share on this video that it might be a blessing to somebody else's life. And go ahead and like, love, sad face, angry face, whatever you want to do. I want to know how you feel um, tonight about the Word of God. Amen. If you have your copy of the Word of God, follow me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter number 8. We're in the book of Luke this morning and God blessed us with a mighty word. So we're going to go tonight to the book of Luke chapter number 8. And I'm going to begin at verse number 40 and read um, the remainder of the chapter in its entirety. I would have you to know that the grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse number 40. I don't have to ask if you're there because I believe in the spirit that you're there. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse number 40. And the Bible reads, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, and immediately she was made whole. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not here, she came trembling and fell down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in except Peter. And James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, We not. She is not dead, but she sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called her, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway, and he commanded them to give her meat. I want to give for a thought, for a subject for tonight, a master's touch. A master's touch. Somebody's in your house with you right now. You know, you keep your social distance. Just say, hey, you need the master's touch. The master's touch. This text that we find tonight comes from Jairus's daughter. Jarius, we know, is a rich young ruler who has a daughter who has fallen sick. 
And he does the thing that only rich people really understand. He uses his strength against his weakness. If, if, if he were poor, he might not have been able to immediately get access and get to Jesus. But for those of you watching this right now, they got a few dollars. You know when you got money, you got access to stuff that other people don't have access to. You got people that you can call that other people just can't get in contact with. Some folk been waiting on an appointment for 10 years. You get an appointment just by calling when you got the right connections, when you have access. So Jerry has had access to Jesus and he could get to Jesus and, and he went to Jesus and said he said my daughter at, is at the point of death and I need you to do something about it you you say you're a Lord you say you are a healer you're a master I need you to come along and do something about my problem nothing makes you feel weak like when you're hurting and there's nothing that you can do about it. I feel for parents that one of the greatest hurts that you can feel is to see your child sick or your child suffering and knowing that there's nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing that you can do to relieve the pain, knowing that you would give anything in this world to take the place so they would not have to experience the pain. And a, a, a house call from the master is a pretty big deal. He wants Jesus to come into his house. I, I, I don't know what kind of house cleaning you would have to do in order for Jesus to come in your house, but I would, I would imagine you would have to clean that joker from top to bottom. If Jesus, man, you take out the best shiner, you take that plastic off of your, of your furniture, you put out the best wine, you put out the best everything if you knew that Jesus was coming by your house. Well, you ought to be preparing if Jesus lives on the inside of you anyway. But, and, and, and while he's coming over, there's this woman, and this woman has a problem. This woman, she has a dilemma. And, and, and she has come to the point in her life where she has run out of options. Somebody watching this video right now knows what it feels like to run out of options, to have done everything that you can do, to have tried everything that you have tried, to have pulled every resource that you can pull, and you get to a a place to where you feel like you just can't do anything else. But anyway, Jesus is coming to the house. And while he's coming over, this woman, this woman, she has a situation where she's run out of options and she has run out of options. She has gotten desperate. Her last attempt she comes to Jesus. Now, now I got a few things that I've jotted down that are, 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 are similar between the woman and the girl because on one hand, you got this, this little bitty girl, this little girl, 12 years old, laying here. I mean, the little girl is sick, and she's 12 years old. She's dead, so they think there's one little girl, that there's one reality that's gone down the drain. On the other hand, you got this woman that's been sick, for 12 long years, and, and, and this girl has an appointment with the master, and, and this woman ain't got no appointment with the master. And so, so both of them got an issue going on. Both of them got a problem going on. Both of them got a crisis going on, and I don't care who you are. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how much you read your Bible. There are certain conditions and certain situations that come into your life that hurt you so bad that they make you isolate yourself. This woman wasn't going out. She wasn't hanging out with, with, with the women. She wasn't, she wasn't washing clothes down by the riverside. Then she wasn't hanging out with the sisters. This woman, this woman has disconnected herself from society because she is sick. When hanging around, you don't believe me, you don't believe what I'm saying, go in a hospital. The people that are in a hospital are living in a totally different reality than the one that you are living in. They might live right here in Duval, but they don't live in them. You see, when you start hanging around hospitals and other places, you find a world that you didn't even know that you were driving past, that you didn't even know existed, because, listen, sickness separates you from normal life. Please hear what I'm saying, because I'm saying something while I'm saying something. Whenever there's something sick on the inside of you, you will always separate yourself from other people because of your illness. 
and you will live in a ward and you will feel comfortable around people that are messed up just like you messed up, got issues just like you got issues, jacked up just like you jacked up. You want to know what's going on in your life. You want to know why you got so many problems. You want to know why your life is going in the direction that it's going. Look at the folk around you. Look at the people you're hanging out with. Look at your friendship circle. Say, say, what, say, say what you want. If you want change in your life, if you want to get out of your normal state, you want God to break you out of the box and bring you out of your comfort zone. If you want that, anytime we as people don't feel comfortable, we feel like we're alienated. Like the spike light is on us. Like God has called out the little imps and called out the big dogs on us. Both of these people, the woman and the girl, are shut off from the world. Watch the devil that wants to shut you off from the world because the more the devil shuts you off, the closer he is to coming in to make the kill. Both of them were beyond physical help, the help of those that were around them, they couldn't even give a command, somebody help me. And Jairus' daughter, if her father could have done it, I'm sure he would have commanded her to be healed. But he could not do it. Life will always present you with something before you that leaves you vulnerable, that throws you off. That makes you realize you're not as strong as you thought you was. That, that makes you realize that you're not built of what you thought that you were built of. I don't care how strong you are spiritually. I don't care how much you read your Bible. I don't care how much you meditate. You can sit in the corner all day and say, Num your heart and get your, num your heart and get your, whatever you want to say. I don't care how strong you are. There are certain situations that will come at you in this life that will knock the wind out of you and leave you saying, Lord, what happened? No matter what your advantages are in life, you will always be tested. And what I love about God, he tests us in an area of our life that we cannot fix, that we cannot do anything about it by ourselves. And some people, sad but true, would rather give up on it all other than to reach out and ask somebody for help because they feel like by reaching out and asking somebody for, for help, they're showing their vulnerability. And they're showing people that they're not as strong as they thought they were. And they don't know everything that they thought they knew. Both of these women were what you would call untouchable. You see, the law said that, you know, our master, he was a priest. And the law says that Jesus, as a priest, he could not touch a bleeding woman. That was the law. He could not do that. He could not come in contact with a bleeding woman. It would have made him unclean. The woman herself was declared unclean. She was untouchable. Nobody touched her. He couldn't touch the dead girl. He was a priest. Nobody touched this woman. The woman decided, whatever I have to do, whatever it takes, I'm all in. If I got to crawl, guess what, man? I'm all in. If I got to walk by myself, guess what? I'm all in. Lord, I don't need your autograph. I ain't trying to touch your hand. I ain't trying to get no selfie. I ain't trying to be all up in your face. If I could but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. You can sit and look pitiful if you want to. You can either sit there and lay down and die in your own blood and in your own mess, or you can say, Lord, whatever it takes, however long it takes, Lord, I'm riding with you. And alone, Jesus drive, man, I'm in for the ride. I'm in for the ride. If you want it bad enough, you're going to have to step out of comfortability. You're going to have to get out of it. He said, go thy way, daughter. Thy faith has made thee whole. It, it, it wasn't what I did that made you whole. It was what you did 
that made you whole. Y'all, y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. It's because you've been waiting on God to do something, but God, listen, is waiting on you to do something. I don't care. I don't know who I'm talking to. You're watching this out there in cyber world, but whatever it takes, wherever you are, just go ahead and bust a move right there by yourself. It's not going to change until you change. It's not going to get better until you make a move. Stop waiting on something to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen until you get out of your stupor, until you crawl up out of your circumstances and say, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm all in. Now, 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 the reason I wanted to preach about this little girl tonight, the reason I wanted to talk about this situation tonight is because this little girl, to me, is the superstar of the text. She's the star of the text. I told, I, this is what I, I told you what was similar about them and what I like about them. Let me tell you what's different. Whatever's wrong with her is so bad that she stopped reaching out for help. There comes a place in your life where things get so bad that you stop trying. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you're in a predicament right now in your life where you feel like giving up, you feel like throwing in a tie, you feel like it ain't worth it, I might as well just give up, go ahead and lay down right here, but can I tell you something that will man put a period on your situation, God can put a comma and say that there is more to come after this, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. If you love him tonight, God got something in store for you. He got something in store for you. Jesus, Jesus came to the girl's house and he put everybody, he put everybody out the room. Let let, let me tell you what's different. As I said, whatever's wrong with her, this little girl has stopped asking for help. She stopped reaching out. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's it's a bad day when you're so hungry that you stop asking for food. When you're so broke that you stop asking for alms. That's a bad day. That's a sad day. You, 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 she, she, they're reaching out because what, what, whatever's broken is happening here. Some of us right now, we reach out. We don't reach out because we feel like we're too good to reach out. But let me tell you, certain situations will hit you in this life that you're going to have to reach out. And I'm not talking about reaching out and asking, reach out and help somebody that's going through a similar predicament in their life. Jesus came to the girl's house, and he put everybody outside. Y'all get out. Y'all get out the room. Can can I warn somebody that, that need to know this tonight? You need to get some of them people out the room with you. I ain't, I, and I ain't trying to be, no, I ain't trying to be messy. I ain't trying to stir that up. Well, yeah, I am. I'm trying to stir some up. I'm trying to get some stuff. You need to get some of those people out of the room with you. Get some of those people out of your life because the very people that you are holding on to, the very people that you love, the very people that you feel like you can't do anything without, that you can't get along without them, they are the very ones that are keeping you from being all of who God wants you to be and watch when you let them go how much peace and serenity and tranquility you will have in your life when you learn how to simply let them go when you simply learn how to let them go there are, there are some of you watching right now and I would have you to know you can't see him but Jesus is in your house right now he walking in the kitchen right now fixing him a plate getting something to drink out the fridge he's in your house right now Jesus is right there but you can't reach him because you've lost your ability to reach out preach it what you mean you, you, you can, you can, you can, you, you can stand but you can't reach out Because we got so much brokenness on the inside of us. But instead of us coming to God with our brokenness and with our shamefulness and with our pitifulness, what we want to come to do is come to God and we want to dress it up. And we want to act like we all of this and we all of that with God. But let me tell y'all, I've gotten to a point in my relationship with God, but I just come to God and I say, Father, here I am. This is what it is. This is what is going on. Lord, I can't do anything about it. Lord, I'm trusting you. It's in your hand. I'm depending on on you, Lord, do something about it. Jesus comes to the girl's house, and some of you tonight may be in a situation right now 
where it feels like everybody's just been removed from your life. Can I, can I tell you that's good news? That maybe God is removing certain people out of your life so he can finally give you the master's touch. The master's touch. This is what is amazing. Maybe, maybe Jesus could say that as a priest, you must realize that maybe Jesus could say that, that what she did was not his fault because he didn't know that she was going to do it. Man, I was just walking about. I was walking through the crowd. I didn't know this woman from Eve to Stella. She just came out of the crowd, came out of nowhere, and she laid her hands on me. She broke a law to get her blessing. She broke a rule to get her blessing. She broke protocol to get her blessing. Let me tell you, sometimes certain situations in your life will be so dire that you don't care what you got to do. You don't care how long you got to call. You don't care how long you got to pray and fast. You need God to show up on your behalf. Maybe Jesus could say, well, man, you know it ain't my fault because I didn't even know she was going to touch me. She walked up behind me, and she took it while I wasn't looking. But this little girl here, Jesus, 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 got to break protocol. He breaks protocol because he regards people more than he regards principles. Hear me what I said. Jesus regards people more than he does principles. Some of you watching this right now, you got so many principles in your life that you can't even live up under the principles that you got. Got so many rules, you got every order in the world, you got so many thou shalt and thou shalt not sin, that you are killing people to try and keep your principles. And you do it in the name of Jesus who broke principles to save people. Jesus now has a decision. He got a decision. Do I lose the child or do I keep the law? Do, do I allow this child to succumb to her illness or do I try to appease the law? The law said keep your hands off of her. Don't touch her. The law said don't use her. Don't get near her. Don't connect with her. The law said that he shouldn't be dealing with folk like that. If he would go by the book, you wouldn't even be watching me right now. If God would regard iniquity, you would not even be sitting there watching me on this cyber revival tonight. He broke a law to get to you where you were, wherever you are right now. Just shake yourself and say, I got something to be excited about. I got something to praise the Lord about because even though I was not worthy, he broke the law to come and rescue me. To come and rescue me from from my sins. He didn't need who you think you are. He didn't need your money. He, did, he didn't need who folk thought you are. He didn't need your bachelor's and your master and your doctorate. He looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. He is everything that she is not. He is up. She is down. He is right. She is wrong. He is clean. She is filthy. He is living. And she's dead. And through no goodness of her own, no effort, no movement of her own, she's laying there lifeless. The, the, the message I got for today is it's going to stick for some of y'all that are watching this tonight. You, you've been laying there in your condition, just like this little girl. You've been laying there for a long time in depression, in anxiety, in helplessness, in depression. You've been laying there. You've just been laying there feeling like things are not going to get any better. You've been laying there. You've been struggling. You've been going through this, and you've been going through that. You've been laying there, and, and, and this problem has got so bad that it has robbed you of your peace. That it has robbed you of relationships. That, that it has robbed you of other important things that you have dear in this life. He said, he said, it has robbed you of things. You should have been further along in life right now. You should have been higher. You should have been doing better. Help, I've fallen, Lord, and I can't get up. I'm down here, Lord, and I can't get up. I'm bleeding. I'm broken. I'm hurting. I'm battered. Lord, I need you right now. 
And so the text about the woman, everybody preaches that. Y'all have heard that preached 10 million times in your life. Oh, the woman reached out and touched the hem of his garment. If I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. And she did that. Everybody talks about that. They preach about how she touched the hem of his garment. But what about the other touch? They talk about how she reached out, she touched the hem of his garment, and she was made whole. But what about the other touch? They preach about the woman who touched Jesus. But what about the Jesus that touched the woman? They preach about that this woman, this woman's touch represents potential for you and me on tonight. She represents possibilities. This girl is 12 years old. Yes, Lord, she has not accomplished her dreams. She has not made it anywhere in life. She got sick saying, well, maybe not. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. Maybe I can't. Maybe that's not for me. Maybe I'm not supposed to. And she's dying. She's taking herself out of her future plans because she can't get up. And the Bible said he came to her. Aren't you glad God came to you? He said that the Bible says that God came to her, took her by the hand, and stood her up on her feet. That's what I love about God. God don't need a long time to get his job done. When God steps in the room, when God comes on the scene, when God speaks a word, healing is going to show up. Healing is going to take place. Deliverance is going to take place whenever God shows up. And now, the little girl that everybody said wasn't going to make it. Now the little girl that everybody said, she's dead. There's nothing that we can do for her. The one that everybody thought it was O.V. for her. Damsel, arise. And I speak to you on tonight. To every dead thing. To every dead relationship. To every dead feeling that you have on the inside of you, arise. All you need is the master's touch. Man, I've been running around for 12 years looking for a healing, looking for a blessing. Some of y'all watching this right now, you know what it's like to go through a long-standing issue. You know what it's like to go through a long-standing problem. You realize that David wasn't being for real when he said that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy would come in the morning. Some of us got it messed up because we think that, oh, I'm going to go to sleep tonight, and when I wake up that all my problems are going to be over, that everything is going to be all right when I wake up because he said that joy was coming in the morning. But can I tell you, your morning might be a day. Your morning might be a week. Your morning might be a month. Your morning might be a year, several years, but however long it takes, God is going to touch me. I'm standing in need of the master's touch. I'm standing in need of the master's intervention. You're watching me right now, but can I tell you something in case you did not know? That I'm nothing but a sinner saved by the grace of God. I too, just like you, one day found myself on the auction block of sin, and I was being sold to the highest bidder. But I'm so glad that my Savior, my Master, my God, Jesus, stopped by, and he saw me. And he bought me off of the auction block of sin. And he said, Peterson, guess what? You don't have to stay out here. I got something better for you, if you will but follow me, and if you will but trust me. So whoever you are, wherever you are, you're watching this video right now, I want to let you know that God wants to touch you. He wants to touch you tonight. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, God wants to touch you. He wants to put his hands on your situation. If you are depressed, the Lord wants to touch you. If you got anxiety, the Lord wants to touch you. If you're sick in your body, the Lord wants to touch you. Feel like you can't get well, the Lord wants to touch you. If you're ailing mentally, physically, emotionally, the Lord would like to touch you. 
But don't get mad just because he ain't coming in the room when you want him to come in the room. All of y'all watching this right now, you have been to the doctor a time or two in your life. And you know you don't just walk through the door and walk into the doctor's office. There's a waiting room that you have to sit in first. You have to sit in the waiting room, and nobody likes the waiting room because you would much prefer to go ahead and go in and get your stuff done so you can go home and be on about your way. I left some ham hocks on the stove. I got to go. I can't be here all day. I got to get up out of here. But let me tell you, I thank God for the waiting room. I thank God for those moments in my life where he said, hey, now, Doc, I'm going to slow you down because you're getting out of my way. You're getting out of my plan. I got something better for prepared for you. The master would like to see you on tonight. The master would like to come and touch you on tonight. The master would like to come. He's knocking at your door right now. Come up and open the door. He's knocking at your door right now and saying that if any one of you will come and open the door, I desire you to come in and sup with you. I want to come in and make my abode with you. You need the master's touch. Let him touch you on tonight. You're not too messed up that the master cannot do anything about it. Do you not know that even at this very moment, you are on the wheel? For we know that he is the potter, and we are but clay. And even at this moment right now, God is working on you, and he's shaping you until you become his complete and finished work. But alone, life's way, we're going to experience some hurdles. We're going to experience some bumps. You are going to experience some situations in this life that are going to make you question your entire belief. You are going to experience some things in this life that are make, going to make you question God, that are going to make you question his word. Lord, how is it that you can be so good? How is it that you can be so merciful and you allow X, Y, and Z to happen in my life? The master would like to see you on tonight. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch your mind. He wants to touch your spirit. Come to know the Lord in a real relationship. Time for all this fake religion, who blah, smoke and mirrors. Time for all this cliche stuff that you've been doing for so long that you no longer know why I mean to the church I sin, I repent, I forgive my sin, ask church, pray for him, Lord, forgive. Been singing the same old song for the last umpteen years in your life and you still have not gotten any closer to Jesus, the master would like to see you on tonight. He would like to see you. He wants to come in, clean you up, and make you new. And Jarius' daughter to us is a reminder. Can I remind you what he's trying to remind us of? It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he's just good enough to do the same thing for you. So I don't know about you tonight, but I trust him. I'm depending on him. I'm leaning on him. I've given God my all. I'm all in with God. I've given him my everything. I ain't got no cards up my sleeve. I ain't got nothing hid up the table. I have given everything to God because I need the master in my life. I need him. I can't make it a minute, an hour, a second. I can't take a step, can't go a day without him. I need him in my life. And even as I walk right now, the Lord is ordering my steps. He's guiding my mind. He's guiding my life. Because when you're in the master's hands, this ain't like all state, man. You in some really good hands. Trust him. Trust him tonight for your salvation. Even where you are right now, the Lord would like to touch you. He would like to touch you. He wants to come in and make the difference in your life. But what I love about God is that he knocks. He doesn't barge in. He knocks, meaning that you have to make the decision whether or not you're going to open the door. Y'all know how we do when Jehovah's Witness come to the door. Well, we'll go right there to the window, look out the shade. The folks see us looking out the shade, and we still ain't home. Somebody else come to your house and knocking. You don't want to speak. You don't want to have conversation. You know how to get rid of them. There's a knock at your door right now, and you want to answer this knock. Because once Jesus comes into your life, he'll make a difference that you never thought possible. What you thought couldn't happen is something minor that can be done in the hands of God. In your hands, it might not work. 
in your hands, you might not get there. But in the master's hands, you're going to be all right. I thank you for tuning in tonight. I thank you for watching this broadcast. And wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever station, whatever walk of life you come from, I know a man that would like to see you on tonight, and his name is Jesus. Would you would like to know him? I would welcome you reach out. Inbox us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. You can call us. You can reach out. You can message us. We want you to know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Because I don't want to go to heaven by myself. I want you to be there with me. So if you have any questions, you have any concerns, I pray that you would reach out, that you would question us so that we can help you in any way that we can in your walk with the Lord. At this time, I would ask wherever you are, if you're at your home, if you're sitting next to someone, y'all in the same house, so if one of you got COVID, the other one probably got it. So I ask that you would go ahead and grab that hand that you're sitting next to, wherever you are, in your home, wherever you are. If you're driving, don't let go, don't let go of the steering wheel. Just in your mind, I want you to join me in prayer. Wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you're doing right now, I want you to stop and go with me to the throne of God in prayer. Spirit of the living God, we thank you right now. We thank you for this opportunity that you blessed us with, Father, just to come and sit at the table of your word and feast just one more time. Father, I pray that the meal that was served on tonight was sufficient enough for your people. Father, that there's something that they can take from this tonight that will be beneficial to them, that will help them in their everyday walk with you, to help them walk just a little bit closer to you on tomorrow than they did on today. And Father, we thank you for your intervention in our life. We thank you for never leaving us alone. Father, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and meeting us at our knees. Master, we thank you for your touch. When we were sick, Father, you touched us. When we were broken, Master, you touched us. When we were trodden down, distressed, dejected, and depressed, Lord, you touched us. And, Lord, we need your touch on tonight. Touch us, Master, as only you can. And as a result of it, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. And we'll give you the honor as a result of it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody, wherever you are, shout glory and amen. We thank you on tonight. And if you're ever in our area in Duval, Jacksonville, Florida, come by the Sweetwater Church of Christ and visit us, 7009 Wilson Boulevard, here where the gospel is preached and the water is very sweet. God bless you. In this so sinful world, my time is running out, and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life, but something is sustaining me. Deep down within my soul, God's word is in control, and I know it won't be long till he comes and takes me home. I gotta get ready for that day. I don't